What is up Crossroads? It's Mason here again and I am so excited to announce the launching of a new devotional series entitled Apologetics 101. Pretty much what we're going to be doing for the next couple weeks is going through the various topics of Christian apologetics um, and just briefly exploring them in five to ten minute different videos. For today, I want to talk about what Christian apologetics is um, and how it relates to the Christian faith. So the term apologetics comes from the Greek word apologia, um, and all that means simply church is defense. Um, so Christian apologetics refers to the defending of the Christian faith, um, proving why it's true and why it stands up to objections and anyone who claims the contrary. Um, we use things like philosophy, science, logic, even mathematics, um, many different things external to the Christian faith to prove why the Christian faith is true and not just a religion we believe because it makes us feel good or it brings us comfort. We can turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It says, But honor the Messiah as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Um, this term defense that Peter uses is the term apologia, and it appears 18 other times in the New Testament. This term can be used in a law of court um, in the essence of building a case for yourself to defend yourself from any accusations. So in the same way, when people bring objections to the Christian faith, we as Christians should be prepared and equipped to give them the answers to feel those questions. You know, why is Jesus the Messiah? Why is Christianity? true? How can we trust the Bible? These are the things that apologetics will cover and hopefully in this series Apologetics 101 it will better equip you to answer those questions yourselves. And speaking from my own personal story, my own personal experience, I used to be an atheist when I was in college. I was studying um, biology in my undergraduate to get my bachelor's degree um, and I prided myself on the facts. I prided myself on being a man of science. I just simply assumed that all religions, um, anything of the supernatural was simply fairy tale was simply myth. Um, we believed it because it helped us feel better. Um, maybe they believed it back then to help make sense of the world what could now be explained by science. But I remember being overwhelmed um, when I did a deep dive into the apologetics of Christianity. Um, this was about a six month journey of me just researching the facts and the evidences for why we know Christianity to be true. I was overwhelmed by the history, by the science, by the philosophies that backed the Christian faith. I remember being stubborn and not wanting to believe anything on the sole basis of comfort. Um, I didn't want to believe something just because it made me feel better. I wanted to find the truth and Christianity proved itself to be true over that six month period. So my hope, church, is to encourage you guys not to fear the objections, not to fear the many questions that people may bring to you. We should welcome them. The Christian faith is based on the truth, and you know we have that in our corner. We have the evidence, and we have the facts. So I'm hoping throughout this series, church, that you will be able to be empowered in your evangelism attempts. Um, you know, when you are witnessing to non-believers or friends or family, you're not intimidated by the many questions because you have these tools ready to go. You know the facts. You know the evidence of the faith you believe, um, and also to increase your confidence of why you believe what you believe, to understand that we indeed are reading the divinely inspired words of God, that we are indeed trusting in the God of Abraham, the God of Moses way back then, even till to today. So to close out this video today, um, I just want to briefly touch on the topic of truth. Um, you know, I'm making this claim that Christianity is the truth, but we need to ask ourselves, what is truth? Um, for those of you who don't know, Ravi Zacharias was one of the greatest Christian apologists of our time. He helped me um, with a lot of my skeptic questions, um, my, my skeptic thoughts. Um, he, he was incredible, really, truly brilliant man. Unfortunately, he passed earlier this year, um, but I encourage you guys to go check him out on YouTube. It will definitely bless you. So Ravi Zacharias said, by definition, truth excludes. Think about what this means. He's pretty much saying that anything that claims to be true automatically excludes or rejects anything that contradicts it. So for example, if I say that I am currently here at Crossroads Community Cathedral, and then someone else claims that I am not here at Crossroads Community Cathedral, those both, both of those claims cannot be correct at the same time. They cannot coexist. One is true and one is false. And if I'm correct in saying that I'm currently here at Crossroads Community Cathedral, then anyone who claims the contrary is false. 
by definition, truth automatically excludes that which contradicts it. And we can take this thinking of truth and apply it to the claims of Jesus Christ or to the claims of the Christian faith. For example, John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, either Jesus' claim about being the only way to God was false, or Jesus' claim about being the only way to God was true, and anything else that contradicts that is false. So, if Jesus was correct in what he said, then when other religions or other people claim to have other ways to God, we can immediately know that they're false, just because based on the fact that Jesus himself said, I am the only way to God. So then the question remains, why does Jesus have the authority to say what is true? How do we know Jesus is indeed correct? Well, he's the son of God. He is the creator incarnate. He is God come down to earth to tell us truth because he himself designed truth. He himself is the creator. So it makes sense that he is the, you know, the only arbiter of what is true. But unfortunately, whenever I make this claim, whether I'm evangelizing or sharing with friends, and I say Jesus is the son of God, he came, he died for our sins, and he alone has the authority to tell us what is true. Many people don't ask me why I believe that. They simply say, I'm glad you found your truth. I'm glad um, you know, that works for you, but I don't necessarily subscribe to that. The issue with that is what they're trying to do is they're trying to equate truth with opinion. So they're not asking me the rational questions like, oh, well, why do you believe that? What are the evidence and the facts that support that? They just simply say, well, that's good for you, man. I'm glad you found your truth. And unfortunately, this is how a lot of religions are looked at in these times. But Christianity is a claim to truth. It's a claim to know. I'm not saying I believe in God because it makes me feel better. I'm saying I know the living God, the creator, because Jesus is indeed the son of God and told us all about him. So that's why apologetics is so necessary because it allows us to feel these questions when people ask, why is Christianity true? Why is Jesus the son of God? We can be prepared and ready to give them those answers and effectively, effectively establish why we know what we believe to be true. So I encourage you guys to join us as we continue forward in Apologetics 101. I'm, I'm hoping my two goals are to empower evangelism, to make you more bold witnesses for Jesus. When you're talking to non-believers, when you're talking to friends and family, you have confidence because you know you are believing the truth and you have the evidence and facts to back it up. And my second thing that I want to do for you guys is to, um, to build confidence in what you believe, knowing that you do in, indeed believe the truth and not just something that's a fairy tale or makes you feel better. So I encourage you guys to come back here um, and we'll see you next time on Apologetics 101.